Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 30 on time series modeling and forecasting. In uh, one of the earlier lecture, lecture 6, uh, we discussed uh, different methods for the determination of seasonal indices. In this lecture, we will consider handling of seasonal in variations using the box Jenkins approach. In particular, we will consider uh, seasonal different uh, seasonal models, seasonal auto regressive integrated moving average models. Uh, using seasonal auto regressive integrated moving average models, you can model different kind of seasonalities present in the data. The non-stationary behavior of the time series may be due to the presence of trend component, it may be due to the presence of unit roots and along with the other uh, reasons, one of the possible reason is the presence of seasonal behavior and uh, actually when seasonality is present, then mean of the observations is not consistent. The mean of the observations evolves according to some cyclical pattern. So, the process is not mean stationary. Then uh, the question is how to handle such kind of non stationarity or how to model such kind of seasonal non stationarity. Now, here is an example, suppose you have data on monthly rainfall in Delhi, then naturally the rainfall is not constant and it varies by month or by quarters. At least expected rainfall varies by months or quarters. Then for the same month in different years, what we expect? We expect a constant expected value provided there is no trend or trend has been already eliminated from the data. So, if there is no trend in the data, then you ex expect that uh, the same month, say for example, uh, if you take uh, August, then the August of each and every year, uh, of course, uh, it may not have the same rainfall, but you expect or expected rainfall of August for each and every year will be the same. Then uh, in lecture 6, we have discussed different methods for obtaining seasonal indices and some of the methods are seasonal the simple averages method, ratio to trend method, method of link relatives and uh, these methods are unable to provide a link between current observation with the past observations due to seasonality. So, basically all these methods. Uh, try to extract the seasonal component from the variation in the time series. But how the seasonality has evolved uh, with a link between current observation and the past observations due to seasonality. That uh, particular point, these methods uh, 
do not explore or with these methods we do not get some idea of such kind of thing. Now, we consider the concept of seasonality and different types of seasonality. So, suppose y t is a time series and we assume that the time series does not have any trend. Then uh, we say that y t is seasonal with period of seasonality s if expected value of y t is equal to expected value of y t plus s for all t. So, expected value of y t varies in a cyclical pattern. For instance, if your time series has monthly seasonality, then s is equal to 12. And if your time series has quarterly seasonality, then s is equal to 4. So, usually s is fixed number of observations making a seasonal cycle. So, normally we assume that s is fixed. Now, let us consider an example. We consider series of daily data on people visiting a supermarket. So, this time series may have a seasonal pattern and uh, the period of seasonality may be length of the month. Usually, we expect that the number of people visiting the supermarket increases during the first week of each month, uh, because most of the people get salary on first of each month. So, they prefer to do shopping during the first week of each month. So, you observe some kind of seasonal pattern and uh, then uh, the period of seasonal pattern is length of the month. So, S is approximately equal to 30. Of course, it may vary from month to month because some months have 30 days, some months have 31 days and even February has 28 or 29 days. So, uh, this period may vary, but here we are assuming that S is fixed and we also assume that except for its seasonal effect series is stationary and S is fixed. Let us write y t equal to s t s plus eta t, where s t s is the seasonal effect of period s at time t and eta t is a stationary part after eliminating the seasonal effect. And we assume that expected value of eta t is mu. Then uh, we take expectation of both sides of equation 1. So, you get expectation of y t equal to expectation of s t s plus expectation of eta t and we have assumed that expectation of eta t is mu. So, you get mu here. Now, we consider different types of seasonality s t s. Uh, now, the case one is seasonality is a deterministic process. So, suppose seasonality is a constant function for the same months, same month in different years. So, S T S is equal to S T plus K S for all K equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So, after a period of S, the seasonality repeats itself. For example, suppose S T S follows a sinusoidal function, say sine function or cosine function and uh, such kind of sinusoidal functions occur in climate series because of earth's rotation. So, in that case, you observe this kind of phenomena. After a certain period, the series repeats itself. 
of, of course, uh, usually representing such seasonality using sinusoidal functions is inefficient. So, normally we do not use sinusoidal functions to represent the seasonality. Suppose, for example, you have monthly data, then you may introduce 11 dummy variables, one for each month of the year. So, this is one possibility you introduce 11 dummy variables, one dummy variable for each month and then you proceed. The second case is seasonality evolves over time as a stationary process. So, your seasonality factor is STS and this is a stationary process oscillating around some mean say mu s. So, STS is equal to mu s plus V t expected value of V t is equal to 0. Mu s is deterministic effect of seasonality depending on s and V t is a stationary process and introduces variability in STS. So, this STS has two parts, one is the deterministic effect of seasonality and this part depends upon S and then it has second part V t which is a stationary process and because of this part we get variability in S t S and we also assume that expected value of V t is equal to 0. Now, we consider case 3. In case 3, the seasonality changes over time with no fixed average value. So, seasonality is a non-stationary process. So, the seasonality may follow any non-stationary process and suppose STS evolves according to a random walk. You know random walk is a non-stationary process. So, we take STS equal to ST minus S, S plus V T and notice that in this random walk, the lag of this term is not 1 like usual random walk, it is t minus s, where s is the period of seasonality. Now, we define seasonal difference of nature of period s, delta s is equal to 1 minus b s, where b is the backward shift operator, then delta s y t is equal to 1 minus b s y t. So, this is equal to y t minus y t minus s. So, the difference between the current value of y say y t and s period lagged value of y y t minus s. Then applying the operator delta s to equation 1, this was equation 1 y t equal to s t s plus eta t, we get delta s y t is equal to delta s s t s plus delta s eta t. Now, delta s s t s is equal to, if you look at this equation, then delta s s t s is equal to v t. So, we obtain a, a stationary process. Actually, if you take Uh, this difference, then we obtain a stationary process delta s s t s is equal to v t, this is stationary and delta s eta t is also stationary. So, in all the three cases, the seasonal series can be changed into a stationary series by applying seasonal difference. So, let us consider the first case, s t s is deterministic. So, s t s is a equal to S t plus k 
S S. Now, delta S S T S is equal to S T S minus S T minus S S means delta S S T S is equal to S T S minus S T minus S S. So, if you take k equal to minus 1, then S T S is equal to S T minus S S. So, this is equal to 0. So, delta S y t is equal to delta S eta, which is a stationary process. Then the second case is S T S is a stationary process, S T S is equal to mu S plus V T. Again delta S S T S is equal to delta S V T, because delta S mu S is equal to 0. So, delta S y t is equal to delta S v t plus delta S eta t, which is equal to v t plus eta t minus v t minus s plus eta t minus s. Now, this is a stationary process. Then we consider case 3. S t s is non stationary process, it follows a random walk like this S T S is equal to S T minus S S plus V T. Again delta S Y T is equal to V T plus delta S eta T. Again this is a stationary process. V T is a stationary process and uh, since eta T is a stationary process delta S eta T is also a stationary process. So, in all the three cases if you take the seasonal difference delta s, then ultimately you get a stationary process. So, you can remove the non stationarity because of seasonality by taking a difference delta s, a seasonal difference delta s. Under fairly general conditions, and for processes with deterministic as well as stochastic seasonality structure, this uh, seasonal difference delta s transforms a seasonal process into a stationary one. Now, uh, this is an important observation and this important observation helps you in developing seasonal models. So, now we consider seasonal auto regressive integrated moving average models or SARIMA models. The basis behind SARIMA models is we can convert non stationary series into stationary ones by taking regular differences. This is what we do in integrated processes we if your time series is non stationary then you in integrated processes you take some regular differences and then it reduces to a stationary time series and then we can eliminate seasonality by taking seasonal differences this is what we have all observed earlier. The seasonality can be eliminated by taking seasonal differences. So, we can convert a non stationary series with seasonality into a stationary one by using the transformation 
z t equal to 1 minus b s to the power capital D, 1 minus b to the power small d y t. So, suppose you have a non stationary series and it has seasonal t also. Then you can convert or you can reduce that series into a stationary series by using this transformation z t equal to 1 minus b s to the power capital D. This part removes the non stationarity because of seasonality and then 1 minus b to the power d this is your regular difference of order small d which removes the normal non stationary behavior of the time series y t. So, capital D is the number of seasonal differences usually we take capital D equal to 1 or 0. A small d is the number of regular differences and usually we do not go beyond 3 differences. Then we model the regular and seasonal dependence separately and then construct the model incorporating both multiplicatively. So, you have phi p b s small phi p b 1 minus b s t 1 minus b small d y t equal to theta q b s theta q b u t. So, basically what you have done you have applied these two differences just to remove the usual non stationarity in the series and seasonality in the series. So, after that your series becomes stationary this 1 minus b s to the power capital D 1 minus b to the power small d y t is a stationary series. And suppose this stationary series follows uh, Arma PQ process in the usual backward shift operator and Arma again it follows Arma process with order capital P of auto regressive term and order capital Q of moving average term because of seasonality or you can say phi p b s is equal to 1 minus phi 1 b s so on minus phi p b to the power s to the power p is the seasonal auto regressive operator of order p. A small phi p is the regular auto regressive operator of order small p. Similarly, theta capital Q b s is the seasonal moving average operator of order capital Q and a small theta Q b is the regular moving average operator of order q. Ut is of course, the white noise process. Then we write the model 5 as auto regressive integrated moving average model of order p d q and p in this part denotes the seasonal part into capital P capital D capital Q s process. So, here this is small p small d small q these are the orders of usual auto regressive moving average and integrated part and 
then here capital P capital Q and capital D denotes. So, capital P is the order of seasonal auto regressive part, capital Q is the order of seasonal moving average part and then you are taking capital D seasonal differences. So, this model provides a good representation of many seasonal series. So, this is the general seasonal auto regressive integrated moving average model. Now, for further motivation, we consider the time series of monthly data on our years. So, here you have 12 months and then you have R years and then your observations are y 1, y 2, so on y 12, y 13, y 14, so on y 24 and so on y 12 r minus 1 plus 1, y 12 r minus 1 plus 2, so on y 12 r. So, this is the time series for the month of January this time series is for the month of February and so on, this time series is for the month of December. Now, each column may be considered as a realization of a time series generated by the same process or you can say between seasonal dependence. Then the time series between different months of a year also have dependence means within seasonal dependence. So, row wise you will get within seasonal dependence and uh, column wise you get between seasonal dependence. Now, each column may be considered as a realization of a time series generated by the same process arma capital P capital Q say phi P B 12 Y T equal to theta Q B 12 U T means if you look at any column then the observation before Y 13 is Y 1 then here you will get 25th observation. So, the lag between two observations is of period 12. So, that is why we have taken B 12 here and this is the between season model. Then for incorporating the dependence between series at different months, we assume that U t follows ARMA P q process. Uh, here you have capital U t and this U t follows ARMA P q process. So, phi P b U t equal to theta Q b small u t, where small u t is a white noise process. Now, this models dependence within 12 sequences u j plus 12 t, then your final model is phi P b 12 small phi P b y t equal to theta q b 12 phi p b u t or theta q b 12 theta small q b u t. Then allowing for differencing, we get the general seasonal arima process. Here we have not taken any difference, but if you have uh, non stationarity also then uh, we allow for differencing and then we get seasonal arima processes. Now, we obtain autocorrelation function for these processes. 
Now, for the process with ACVF gamma k, the auto covariance generating function is defined as gamma b equal to summation over k gamma k b to the power k. Then the auto covariance generating function of a general linear process is suppose you take this general linear process y t equal to 1 plus summation over i equal to 1 to infinity theta i b to the power i u t or theta b u t the auto covariance generating function is gamma b equal to sigma square u theta b inverse into theta b. So, this is a simple procedure for obtaining the auto covariance generating function. Then uh, x t equal to 1 minus b to the power d 1 minus b s to the power d y t follows a stationary process. So, phi p b s small phi p b x t equal to theta q b theta capital Q b s u t this is the process for x t. And then for obtaining the ACF of this process, let us consider the following two processes phi p v x t equal to theta q v u t and capital phi p v s z t equal to theta q v s v t. Then both of these are stationary processes. And uh, then we can write these as general linear process. So, we write 7 as x t equal to psi b u t and we write 8 as z t equal to capital psi b s v t. So, we have written both of these processes as general linear processes. And uh, this is possible because both of these processes are stationary processes. Where well, a small psi b is summation over j psi j b to the power j and capital psi b s is equal to summation over j capital psi j b to the power s j. So, hence uh, we can write uh, this equation 6 in the form of a general linear process as x t equal to psi b capital psi b s u t. Now, you know the result that uh, if you have y t equal to say psi b u t, then it is auto covariance generating function is psi b psi b inverse. And, uh, the ith auto covariance is given by the coefficient of b to the power i in this auto covariance generating function. So, now we are going to use this result. So, suppose C i is the auto covariance of alma p q process 7 or 9 and r i is the auto correlation of this alma p q process. Then C i is the coefficient of b to the power i in psi b psi b inverse. Similarly, if capital C s j is the auto covariance and capital R s j is the auto correlation of seasonal alma p q process 8 or 10, then C s j is the coefficient of b to the power s j in capital psi b to the power s capital psi b to the power minus s. Now, if gamma k and rho k are the auto covariance and auto correlation of the process 6 or 11, then gamma k is the coefficient of b to the power k in psi b psi b inverse capital psi b s capital psi b s inverse. So, your problem is to find the coefficient of b to the power k in this product. So, gamma k is equal to c naught 
c to the k plus summation i equal to 1 to infinity you have c s i c s i is the coefficient of b to the power s i in capital psi b s capital psi b s inverse into c s i minus k plus c s i plus k. So, this expression gives you gamma k and then if you take capital C naught is small c naught common, then inside you get R k here plus summation i equal to 1 to infinity, you get R s i here, then you get a small r s i minus k here and then R s i plus k here. So, this is the expression for gamma k k equal to 0, you have gamma 0 equal to c capital C 0, 0 is small c 0 into 1 plus 2 times summation i equal to 1 to infinity capital R s i into small r s i. So, using equation 12 and 13, you can easily obtain the kth auto correlation coefficient rho k. We simply divide gamma k given in equation 12 by gamma 0 given in equation 13. So, you get this expression for rho k. So, you get this expression for rho k as a function of auto correlations of the ALMA process and the auto correlations of the seasonal ALMA process. For example, suppose S is equal to 12, then you know that uh, for the stationary ALMA process for large j, R j is all approximately equal to 0, say for j greater than or equal to 8. R j is approximately equal to 0. So, we neglect it. Then we consider the denominator of 14. <coughs> In the denominator, this capital R S i is non 0 for i equal to 12. Before that, capital R S i will be equal to 0. But small r s i is negligible for j greater than or equal to 8. So, this denominator is approximately equal to 1. Then and the ACF is in a small lag, say for j equal to 1, 2, so on up to say 6, rho k is approximately equal to r k, because this part vanishes. Means either this term is 0 or the first value for which this term may be non zero is i equal to 12, but for that value these two are zero. So, rho k is approximately equal to r k. Now, in seasonal lags, rho 12 k is approximately equal to for that this part is approximately equal to 0, you get r 12 k into R 0 plus R 24 from here plus R 24 k, R 12 k plus R 36 k and then 
this is approximately equal to 0 or 24 or 12 k is approximately equal to 0 or 36 k is approximately equal to 0. So, approximately it is equal to or 12 k. So, 12 k is approximately equal to or 12 k. Then around the signal lags, we observe the repetition of the regular part of ACF of both the sides on both the sides of each seasonal lag. For instance, row 12 k minus 1 is approximately equal to R 12 k R 1 and row 12 k minus 2 is approximately equal to R 12 k R 2. Row 12 k plus 1 is approximately equal to R 12 k R 1 and row 12 k plus 2 is approximately equal to R 12 k R 2. So, you around the seasonal lags you get some kind of symmetric behavior of ACF. Now, we consider this example Z t is generated by the process 1 minus b 1 minus b to the power 4 y t equal to 1 minus 0 0.6 b 1 1 minus 0 0.8 b to the power 4 u t. So, definitely you have quarterly data, then the regular component is M A 1 and its ACF is means uh, you do not have any auto regressive term here, you have just one M A 1 term here. So, its ACF is small r 1 is equal to minus you have minus sign here 0 0.6 upon 1 plus 0 0.6 square. So, finally, you get this value and R j is equal to 0 for all j greater than or equal to 2. Then the seasonal component is also M A 1 4 this part, this part is M A 1 and and this one is M A 1 and its ACF is say, R 4 is equal to minus 0 0.8 upon 1 plus 0 0.8 square which is 0 0.64. So, ultimately you get minus 0 0.49 and then capital R j is equal to 0 for j not equal to 4. Then you can obtain rho 1 equal to R 1 and then rho j is equal to 0 for j equal to 2 3. Both rho 3 and rho 5 are equal to R 4 R 1 which is 0 0.2162 and rho 4 is equal to R 4 which is minus 0 0.49. Then rho j is equal to 0 for all j greater than or equal to 6. So, you observe that these uh, rho j's are uh, 0 in between for j equal to 2 and 3, then again around 4 you have the effect of seasonality. Rho 4 is non 0 and uh, two near points to rho 4 row 3 and row 5 are also non zero. Uh, similarly, you can obtain the partial autocorrelation function also, uh, although the expression for partial autocorrelation function is more complicated. In partial autocorrelation function, PACF of regular structure appears in the first lag, then PACF of the seasonal structure appears in the seasonal lags. At the right of each seasonal coefficient, the PACF of the regular part appears and then the corresponding uh, to positive seasonal coefficient, the regular PACF appears inverted and corresponding to negative coefficients, the PACF appears with its sign. Then to the left of the seasonal coefficient, ACF of the regular part appears. So, here I have plotted the ACF and PACF 
of uh, some say AR process with seasonality AR 12 process you can say. So, you see that after the lag of 12, the ACF is significant in between the ACF is insignificant or 0 actually. We have also shown the PACF of the same process, then these are the ACF of MA12 process and PACF of MA12 process. Uh, then these are the ACF and PACF of AR1 MA12 processes. This behaves like the ACF of AR process up to this point again it starts increasing and then decreases. Similarly, you have PACF of this process. This is the ACF PACF of AR1 AR12 process. Again you get the same kind of picture after each lag of 12 uh, this again increases then again decreases and so on. Uh, we also observe the symmetric behavior of ACF after 12 months or after 24 months. So, we have discussed uh, the seasonal auto regressive integrated moving average models and then we observe that uh, this box Jenkins approach provides a way out for modeling data which have seasonality. Uh, these models uh, also take care of non-stationality in the data. You, uh, if uh, the time series becomes stationary after taking few differences, then you can make it stationary first and then you can also apply seasonal differences and we have also observed that these seasonal differences take care of all the three cases of seasonality which we have discussed in this lecture. For identifying the order of uh, seasonal autoregressive and moving average terms or the usual autoregressive and moving average terms, you can uh, use a ACF plot or PACF plot. So, uh, these models also gave you some idea of how the seasonality is evolving through the past observations. You do not get this kind of idea from the seasonal indices obtained using classical time series approach. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. Hi, I am Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debayan Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. In one of my essays, I am interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, you have your incidence of high BP MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Uh, 
Now, before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is, you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately, you could say, 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now, a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium-sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice, which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So, uh, the WHO went with a five-a-day campaign, which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five-a-day policy, while some went for expansionary dietary policies, like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So, for example, Australia, it went for go for two plus five policy in which it said that you should consume five por two portions of fruits and five portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespective of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28% of women and 25% of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, po five a day portion. So, the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exists a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators. And if there exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So, apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I, will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter, apart from that, which type matters more. So, for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so, uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? So, approximately after this whole survey was conducted, data was converted into portions of fruits. And uh, like for example, three, three tablespoons of vegetables is equivalent to one portion. So, data was converted and provided to the users, that is us from the UK Data Health Survey. So, the major con contributions of my paper is that I found a strong negative association between uh, intake of fruits and self-assessed health, then various measures of uh, blood pressure like mean arterial pressure, high mean arterial pressure, high blood pressure, systolic and diastolic BP and your total cholesterol. Apart from that, I have found a strong positive association between consumption of vegetables and good cholesterol. So, it is recommended in a way that if you want to control your blood pressure, you must consume more and more fruits. And as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact your good cholesterol. Apart from that, I went in for a falsification test. A falsification test is basically conducted to know whether the model that you have adopted and the conclusions that you are drawing are not spurious. So, if uh, a falsification test is done to know, in a way it is tested by seeing an indicator, a health indicator which is not being impacted by your consumption of fruits and vegetables. And then see, we see whether there is significant result or not. If there is no significant result, that means your model is good and your results are non-spurious. So, what we did is for falsification test, we took ear complaints and infectious diseases. Now, ear complaints like if you are deaf since birth or you have some kind of imbalance body imbalance that is not being impacted by your post consumption of fruits and vegetables and we did find insignificant results. Apart from that infectious diseases like HIV, A, HIV AIDS, etc., we found similar insignificant results indicating that our, uh, that our results are non-spurious. 
Apart from that, we went, uh, since there was a, a lot of heterogeneity in the data, like uh, by gender, by age and by weight, we, can, we did the regression analysis. We found results which stated that as far as uh, fruits are concerned, it impacts a male's health more than a female's health. So it is basically said a, a man should consume more fruits to impact his health, whereas as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact a women's health more. But this has been only seen as far as cholesterol is concerned, the various measures of cholesterol, like total cholesterol, good cholesterol, and your incidence of getting high cholesterol. Now, after this, we went in for a policy implication. And in the policy implication, we found, we tried to find two policy implications, what matters and exactly how much portion matters. So as far as how much portion matters, we have found that on an average, five or more portions of fruits impact your overall health, that is your self-assessed health, your MAP, your incidence of high MAP and incidence of high BP. But if you want to have a good mental health, so you can optimize your mental health by consuming three or four portions of fruits as well. And similarly, has, uh, as far as self-assessed health and total cholesterol is concerned, an individual must consume four to five portions to optimally have the impact of consumption of fruits. Apart from that, vegetables have had a very little impact on your health. It only impacts your incidence of getting high MAP and high BP. And uh, you, it's seen that only it impacts when you consume five or more portions of fruits. So an optimum consumption of five or more portions of fruits and vegetables are recommended. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health, on various measures like self-assessed health, mental health, your various measures of blood pressure and various cholesterol levels. Another thing that we find is which type of fruit matters. It has been seen that all size fruits, they impact your self-assessed health, your systolic and diastolic blood pressure, your mean arterial pressure, your high BP and incidence of getting high MAP and high cholesterol. But we find that uh, as far as frozen fruits or canned fruits are concerned, they have a they help in regulating your incidence of getting high MAP or high BP, but it has a trade-off. That means there is something negative happening. It reduces the good cholesterol in your body. Apart from this, it, if, you if you have an incidence of getting high cholesterol, it is recommended that you must consume fruit juices because it has a s impact in reducing your probability of getting high cholesterol. And uh, dried fruits, they impact your self-assessed health. As far as vegetables are concerned, very little impact has been seen. It has only been seen in case of a uh, uh, portion of salads and its association with self-assessed health. Another thing that they have seen is vegetables in composite, they have an association with good cholesterol. So overall, my research basically says that there is an association between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. And um, it is highly recommended that an individual, in order to be healthy, must consume five or more portions of fruits and five or more portions of vegetables per day. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health. Apart from that, all size fruits, they have a better impact on your overall health, your mental health, various measures of blood pressure and cholesterol. So thank you.